Hi and welcome to this tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman. I'm the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today we're going to be looking at part two of my organizer series. Uh, today specifically focusing on categories. Uh, so there's three different category types that are included with the organizer. You have location based categories, you have property categories, and then you have custom categories. And in this case, the US Imperial Environment for Steel has several custom categories already created. So I'm going to show you how to uh, use those three category types. Now these um, explanations are going to be very brief. It's obviously not um, not there to really replace any type of training that goes into a lot more detail. I'm just trying to make you aware of how these work. So first, for simplicity's sake, uh, I'm going to start with the, the most basic of the categories in my opinion. It's the custom categories. And in this case, what I'm going to do is recreate the steel assemblies category. Um, so in order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and delete what we've got here. I say yes, let's go ahead and delete that. Let's pretend it never existed. Like I said, this just gives us a good starting point for something simple. So um, what I'm going to do is right click on one of these existing categories. If you are in a blank project or some other environment that does not have custom categories, what you would see here is something that says custom category. You can select that and right click on it and either create a new category um, or if it says, you know, just a generic custom category, you can simply start editing its properties. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say new category here. And here's that custom category that you might see if you were starting with a, a different environment or a blank project. Um, so I'm going to right click on this guy and choose properties. And here's where I can set up the properties for this new category. Like I mentioned, we're recreating steel assemblies, so that's what I'm going to call it, steel assemblies. Um, and then what is considered a steel assembly? You know, what in the model or what part of the model should we even begin to look at? Um, our models can make up of physical model objects, but it can also be made up of reference models. Uh, in this case, I want to work with the general Tecla structures model, so I'm going to make sure I choose that. Next, what are we filtering for? Because there's concrete objects in this model. There's pad footings. There, there might be slabs. There might be walls. Um, so we want to filter out what we would consider, quote unquote, a steel assembly. And to do that, what I'm going to use is an out of the box filter called steel all. Now you can always create your own filter. If you know anything about filters, um, they all work the same. If I click on object group here, just to see what those filters look like, let's try to make some, some space on my screen here. Um, you can see that the layout of the filter is essentially the same as it is for selection filters, view filters. So if I look at steel all, um, it's simply looking for steel. Uh, it's got to be part of an assembly. It's not a bought out item, etc. So it's a lot of the same filter type stuff you'd see elsewhere. Um, so once I have the uh, steel all being selected, filtered out of the Tecla structures model, how do I want these to be grouped? Because if I don't group them, all I'm going to get is just this, this raw list of material. We can actually see what that looks like. If I come in here and hit modify, um, give this a second to kind of do its thing, you can see that it has found 4,913 steel assemblies. So A, I know that's not correct, um, but it's just this raw dump of, of information. It's just all of the objects. You look, I'm even getting here uh, things like angles. So I know that this needs to be modified further. Um, let me right click on this and go again to properties. Two main things I need to do here. First, I'm actually gonna skip down to the bottom. I want to only grab the assembly so I want to grab the highest level in the model. So if I check that option on and then hit modify, um, I can see now that it's been reduced to 1,227 objects. So 1,227 assemblies or loose pieces of steel. So you can see here, there's all my anchor bolts. If I kept scrolling down, you'd see things like beams. Um, you'd see things like columns. Let me slide down here further. Um, so there's a lot of other object types in here, but again, I'm getting everything kind of a raw dump. So I need to explicitly restrict this further. So if I go into my properties again, um, how do we want to organi organize my assembly? So my assemblies are based on different things. What is the shape? Um, what is uh, the name? That's one that we actually want to use, but it can be anything. 
So if I want to set up my automatic subcategories, what do I want to filter by or what do I want to break these out by? Um, you can choose a generic property template, things like from an assembly list, bolt, group check, component list, things like that. Or we can actually use a property that we set up ourselves. So if I look at uh, name, uh, you can see here there's a lot of different name type categories. So Typically, I would do the main part or assembly name, and that really depends on how you're modeling. Um, so let's try assembly name, and we'll just see if that one works. If I come in here um, and hit modify now, say OK. Looks like that one worked. You can see that the 1,227 objects have now been broken down by the assembly name. So I've got 256 anchor rods, 659 beams, braces, and so on. So you know it might take a little bit of trial and error to find the right um, subcategory uh, property that you want to look for, but name is a pretty popular one. Um, and as you can see, it's then broken those down based on their name. Uh, as I mentioned in the first video, the four dots is simply indicating that I'm grabbing the highest hierarchy level, where the single dot is saying I'm grabbing just parts, uh, as the steel secondary parts up there that you can see in the previous category. So that's the simplest type of category for us to set up. The next one that I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to work my way up the list here, kind of go backwards is the property category. So property categories are great for actually setting user-defined attributes. So the traditional method for me to set a user-defined attribute would be to grab a beam here, I right-click on it, I choose user-defined attributes, I get the full attribute list, I can do the check, uncheck, I can highlight a bunch of other parts, and then we can write a UDA to those objects, right? Well, this tool, this feature in the organizer allows me to predefine UDA values and then simply drag objects into that category. So let me show you very briefly what that looks like. If I right click on my property category, I'm going to set this up to look at the main part information. And I'm specifically doing that because in the US Imperial environment, our UDAs are primarily set up for the main part. Now, some people use assembly UDAs, and that's fine. I'm just simply working with what I have here out of the box. So we're going to tweak this a little bit. I'm going to build another category very similarly, similar excuse me, to the assembly category that we did just a second ago with some minor differences. So I'm going to go to the properties of this property category, and I'm going to make a category called checked by. So the whole point of this is to tag a checked by UDA, as you can imagine. So just like before, I'm going to choose the Tecla Structures model. And I have this steel all filter. But if you remember, the steel all filter grabbed everything, um, main parts, secondary parts, and all. And in the previous example, I did this highest assembly level. But I can't really do that for the UDAs because I'm not tagging an assembly UDA, as I mentioned. I'm tagging, tagging a main part UDA. So um, what I'm going to do is modify the steel all filter a little bit. So I'm going to click on the object group button. Let's go to the steel all filter. And I'm going to add one more row that says that the part primary part should equal one. And that's just saying that I want only the main parts to be filtered out. And I'm going to resave this filter as steel all main part. And that way, um, I can use it here in my category. So let me close this. I'm actually going to have to um, modify and reopen that in order to see all of those. So let me go in here and right click on that again, go to properties. And so here I'm finding all of the Tecla structures model objects. And then under my filters, there's now steel all main part. So I'll select that option, go ahead and say modify. And now I'm getting 1227 main parts, which matches my 1227 steel assembly. So I know I'm on the right track. So let me go back in here to the properties and I want to set up what is this category changing? You know, what property do I want to change about these objects? Well, I want to change the checked by. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom, start doing a search for check. Uh, under my object properties, and you can see that checked by is one of those. So I'm going to go into checked by. I'm going to set up a different category for each person, each checker in my group. So I'm going to do checked by and leave these blank for now. Um, so I'll say modify. 
And then I want to create a subcategory for each checker, each different UDA value that I want to tag. So I'm going to go to new subcategory. And you can see that now it's it's already created an uncategorized group with all 1,227 objects in it, and then a new category. So I'm going to right click on this and choose properties. And I'm going to call this one checked by DH, checked by me. Um, and then what value do I actually want to write to the checked by field? Well, I literally want to put in my initials, DH. Uh, I don't really need to mess with anything else because it's going to inherit the properties of the category that it's nested under. So I'm just going to say checked by text DH and then hit modify. So these are objects that are going to be checked by DH. I'll make one more category at this level, not a subcategory here, but a new category at the same level. And I'm going to set this up to be checked by maybe Lee Snyder from our, uh, from our steel group here. So I'll say checked by uh, LS. What text do I actually want to write to that UDA? I want to write his initials. Uh, and then again, say modify it. And I can do this for anybody else in the group. I can do this for dates. I can do this for um, other UDAs. Make a note though that any drop down menu UDA will be a number. It's going to be the number in that drop down list, not necessarily raw text. Um, so now if I wanted to start tagging parts as checked, um, what I can do is start selecting these objects in the model. Make sure you select the category first that you want to write uh, and then start selecting the objects in the model. And then you can do one of two things. You can either right click on the category and say move the selected objects, which then takes those and puts uh, those four columns in the checked by DH group. Um, the other option I could do here is let me highlight these next columns in the list is I can take these uh, displayed list objects and I can drag them over to the checked by group. And now it's, you can see how it's updated to eight. So by either one of these methods, you're adding members, you're adding objects to that category. Now here's the really cool thing is once you have these added to a category, let's say I want to add those beams now to the checked by Lee Snyder group. Um, when I synchronize the model, when I synchronize my categories, it's actually going to take that UDA based on the category and it's going to push it to the objects in that category. So rather than me having to, again, right click, open up a properties menu, select a bunch of parts, uncheck, fill in the information, hit modify, when I have these predefined uh, fields, these predefined values that I want to write, it makes tagging user defined attributes very, very fast. So if I go and take a look at one of these columns and I go to the modeling workflow, we can see that checked by DH is filled out. And that's because I was able to drag those parts to that category and then synchronize it. So if we look now at the last uh, category, the location based categories, um, we can see here that it's listing 1,369 objects. That's because the location based categories focuses generally on assemblies and cast units or the highest uh, uh, hierarchy level automatically. Um, and then here we have a section called site and then there is a building defined within that site. Uh, the building is traditionally based off of your grid lines. So if I right click on this building, I can choose this option called define boundary boxes for locations. The boundary boxes are, like I mentioned, based off of the grids in the model. And in this particular model, I have two, one that's rotated and one that's square. So I'm going to choose this square option first, which is for this um, kind of western side of the building. So I'm going to call this the west wing. And then it's reading off of that grid system that the grid is from A to grid line I. Well, as you can see, I is pretty much projecting into the second building at this point. So I'm going to change this option to say, no, give me from A to F, uh, which stops here at the corner. Uh, also, the Y is being based off of where uh, grid line 5 starts and then where grid line 8 ends, but I do have part of this building that runs beyond into a manually created grid line that's not showing up here. So if I double check these values real quick, let's see how far that last column is. Um, it is 44 foot 9 and 3 quarters, let's say roughly 45 feet beyond grid line 8. So if I wanted to include all of those parts, I need to go 35, or sorry, 45 feet past 
grid line 8, which will be about 135 feet out. So if I set that dimension manually, instead of leaving it up to the grid system, um, we can actually double check this. If I click on the little cube here to the left, this will draw some temporary graphics to let me know, you know, is that far enough? Am I encompassing as much of the building as I think I am? Uh, in this case, I'm gonna say, yes, I am. Uh, so I'm gonna say modify, and we can see this building actually populate in the location based categories. So we'll just give this a second. So if I um, take a closer look here, you can see that of the 1,369 assemblies or cast units, um, uh, 949 are uncategorized and 420 are now part of the West Wing building. So you would go in and set up multiple buildings based on the grid systems. Uh, you can also manually create them, um, which is covered a little bit in our help files. Like I said, this is kind of just giving you some basic overviews. So if I go back into this West Wing, we can actually further define the West Wing. Um, so the overall building is based on the grid. We can also set up different sections and different floors. So let's take a look at what that uh, looks like. So if I go into my section, I'm going to create three sections here called section one. I'm going to add another one called section two. And I'm going to add another one called section three. Um, just like the overall building, you can see how it's the grid locations. So I'm going to say here that uh, section one should be from A to C. I'm just keeping it simple. Um, so we'll say A to C. Section two should run from C to maybe E. So change that. And then the last section runs from E to F. So once you have those defined, um, when I hit modify, we can see how the west wing is now broken down into three different sections. Again, we can double check that by clicking on the cube to the left. There's section one, there's section two, and there's section three. Again, just helping me organize things um, further. So the last thing I want to do is go to different floors. Um, so you can create a new floor system. I'll say create. You can manually type in the different elevations that you want, or you can simply say floors based on grid. Simplest way to do things, so I'll just keep it at that. So I have the floor, floor one, floor two. You call this roof, second, first, something like that. Um, but when I hit modify, it's going to take those elevations and then further break down the section. So now I have section one is made up of several floors. We can also visually see these just like before. So there's floor one, there's floor two, and there's floor three, or you know, floor, floor one, floor two, however it's named, um, broken down. So the cool thing about this is obviously it's, it's almost filtering these based on the uh, kind of the phase or maybe the erection sequence, uh, if you want to think of them that way. But I can also use these to find specific objects in the model. Now we can further customize this and move some stuff around, uh, but again, just kind of keeping things simplistic. Um, if I wanted to find all my objects in this section one, floor one, you can see that it's highlighting a bunch of parts. I might rearrange some of those, like move the columns into the, the lower level floors, which is possible. But if I just leave it up to the defaults, this is what I'm getting. But maybe I wanted to find only the beams that were in that area. Well, I can go down to the steel assemblies group. I can hold control and also click the beam line. So now I'm getting just objects in section one, floor one, that meet the criteria called beam. So by using the organizer, you know, the, com the combined categories based on location and uh, the custom categories based on filters, it's almost like having this instant feedback filter system that we don't have using traditional filters. So um, again, this was just a very brief overview of a lot of the categories. It's not really going to go in as deep as we can go with some of our, our trainings, but hopefully this kind of gives you some good ideas and get some juices flowing on, on what you can do with these. Um, if you are looking for any assistance or you have any additional questions, as always, make sure you reach out to your local help desk. And like always, thanks for watching.